Hello friends, my name is Parish and you're watching Tech Dynamics. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon so that you get notifications of my upcoming videos. In one of our previous video, I discussed about an overview of the security model in Dynamics 365. Well, taking it further in this video, we are going to discuss how you can identify security roles in Dynamics 365. And we are also going to discuss about access and privileges. So keep watching and stay tuned. Before we move into the CRM, let's note some important points over here. So security roles are the baseline of the security inside Dynamics 365, which defines permissions and permissions are defined by privileges and access levels. Well, privileges is nothing but what a user can do in Dynamics 365, such as creating, updating, or deleting records, whereas access levels define at which level a user can perform his or her tasks, such as at the user level or at the organization level or at the business unit level. For example, can a user update only their own record or can they also update team members records as well? So that, those are all defined by uh, privileges and access levels. Now, every user must have at least one security role assigned before they can access Dynamics 365. Otherwise, they won't be able to access Dynamics 365. And with deployment or sign up, um, the default security roles are created inside Dynamics 365. You can choose to either use those default uh, security roles or you can also create new ones. Now security roles can be modified except the system administrator security role. And of course, if you want to uh, modify or create new security roles, you need to be signed up as a system administrator or at least you need to have that role. And you also have an option to create a new security role and also there's an option to copy a security role and make the changes to it, which is far much more useful because setting up security roles can be um, uh, can be extensive tasks. And if you can just copy and just modify them, then it helps to save a lot of time. All right, now let's have a look at the security roles. For that, let us click on settings and security. And over here, you'll find security roles you will see that there are some default security rules which are available um, in the system. So you can choose to use them or you can create uh, new ones as you like, or you can actually copy and modify them as well. So um, for each security role, there is a name of the security role, which is a logical name so that you can assign uh, the roles to the user properly. And each security role is assigned to a business unit. Now we will come to the business unit a little later. Uh, right now, let's go ahead and have a look into the security role. On the details tab, it's just the role name and the business unit is attached to. Now in the core records, now what we have over here is all the core entities, um, the actions that user can perform, and under each combination, we can specify at what level that action can be performed by the user. So you can look at the key legend over here. If it is a blank circle, um, nothing is selected. Uh, you can select the user level permission, business unit level permission. A user can perform uh, actions at the parent child business units and at the organization level. So for example, for an account in this particular role, uh, the user can create an account at the business unit level. However, he can read the account at the organization level and also write the account at organization level. So you can uh, provide permissions to the actions and the levels at which those actions can be carried out. Similarly, uh, under each tab like marketing, sales, service, there are uh, entities related to those areas and you can again provide privileges and access levels and at the end you will find a custom entities now this is the place uh, where your custom entities are listed out so if you have your own solution where ha you have your own entities defined they are all defined over here and similarly you can go ahead and um, provide the security rule permission levels over here 
There are some more actions at the list level. So you can select a security role, save filters to the current view, or you can create a new view with your own filters. And again, you can also copy the role. So when you copy the role, what it does is it creates a snapshot of that particular role, which is which you have selected. And you can name that to um, anything that you like. So let's say my account manager and you can choose to open the new security tool once the copying is complete and once you click on OK uh, it will create a copy of that uh, particular account manager if the pop-up is blocked the security uh, role will not open so just make sure that the pop-up is not blocked but if you go ahead and find that security role now my account manager is created over here and if you click on it, this is just the snapshot of the account standard account manager security role. Now, what this has done is it has saved a lot of time for me uh, because I can go ahead and, and modify this and save this and assign it to the user. So I don't have to do all the stuff. I just have to copy and just do the modifications only to those entities which are required. Um, again, you can, if you do not, want this um, security role or you want to remove it you can just go ahead and delete that security role as well so just a small tip uh, over here um, in the security rules the create read write delete append append to assign and share these are called the privileges and for each entity you can provide the access levels to those privileges by clicking on these small circles for which the key uh, is defined over here at the bottom so for an account for this particular security role i can define that the user cannot create any account records however he can read the account uh, records at the organization level but if you want to make a bulk change all you can do is for this account record you can double click on the account record and you will notice that the access levels for the privileges are changing accordingly and similarly if you want to make a bulk change at the column level for example if you just want to provide read permission for all the entities for this user so if you click on the read you will notice that a bulk edit is taking place across all the entities. Now to give you some more understanding of privileges and access levels, let's just go through a few very simple examples. Now whatever you see in yellow are privileges and whatever you see in green is the access levels. So a user can delete a contact owned by the user. So here the delete is the privilege and any record which is owned by the user is an access level. So the access level is user. Similarly, a user can read accounts available in the business unit. So here the read is a privilege and the user will be able to read any record which is at the business unit level. So the business unit is the access level. Similarly, a user can modify code at the organization level. So modify is a privilege and organization is the access level. Similarly, a user will be able to share cases available in the business unit and the child business unit. So here sharing is a privilege and the parent child business unit is the access level. So I hope you get an idea of what privileges and access levels are so why don't you go ahead and try it out for yourself. Enjoy.